And we are live here on YouTube. Welcome to another live English lesson with me, Zdenek. And this time my student is Martin. Hi, Martin. How are you today? I'm fine. I'm good. Excellent. How is Germany these days? Uh, the weather is fine today. Uh, yeah, uh, it's really sunny, a sunny day. It was a sunny day today and um, yeah, really good. Yeah, the same here. Yeah. We are not that far from each other, right? We yeah. are from the same neck of the woods, almost, you could say. <laughs> <laughs> We're neighboring countries. Yeah, yeah. And today uh, I went with, with my wife in a special area uh, for a walk because we have holiday now and uh, yeah. Ah. yeah. So how long, how long is your holiday? It was or it's been three weeks. And has, it, has, it, has I, it finished yet? I, it, it hasn't finished, it ended uh, on Friday. It finishes on Friday? On Friday, yeah. Okay, okay, okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Uh, well, three weeks, that's that's good enough, I would say. <laughs> yeah, it's uh, my, my, hol my summer holiday, uh, but... Um, you I, always do I, it like that, Martin? Do you always take three weeks off? Yes, in, in the summer, yeah. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, sounds good. Yeah. Uh, does it, is that enough to recharge your batteries, as we say? <sighs> yes, um, for me, it's, it's enough. It's, uh, yeah, it's really, really long time. Yeah? And um, not every person has the opportunity to, um, to have a holiday for, for so long. Yeah. Uh, but uh, for me, it's really good, yeah, to have the opportunity to um, that I can use it or make it. Yeah. And uh, yeah. But like I said before or in the last session, um, we we are on staycation. Yeah, we are not yeah. in on holiday uh, in in a hotel or so. Yeah. We, we stay we we stayed home huh? or we are staying home now. Yeah, I see. I see. Well, as long as you are rested, that's you know that's the that's the idea, isn't it? <laughs> yeah. And I hope I hope it will be the same for whoever is watching this live lesson. I would like to welcome Nina, Monica, and Helen, who are watching, and also Jörg. Hopefully, Hi, I'm pronouncing you your name correctly, Jörg. Yeah, Jörg is right. T tell me where you're from, Jörg. Tell me where you're from. Oh, good morning. Uh, it's far away, I would say. <laughs> oh, <laughs> right. Because we have. Yeah. What time is it here, Martin? Uh, seven, seven five. Mm, that's right. Mm. Five past seven. Correct. Mm. Okay. So, just like always, I would like to just introduce this lesson. I would like to tell you what this is about. Basically, this is me teaching my student online and um, there are different ways you can teach a lesson, an English lesson, different methods. Um, it really depends on the student, on the student's needs and also on your available resources, on what kind of method you're comfortable with. And sometimes what I like to do is to experiment and I've decided to do an experiment with what we call dogma lessons. Dogmay means that this is an improvised lesson where it's not it's it's not as if it's all completely improvised because it's also kind of based on my teaching experience as you know as a teacher but uh it's basically just a conversation just a you know ordinary conversation with a student and the language will come up as we as we speak and we're going to deal with what's called emerging language yeah and then hopefully I will be able to do some corrections and, and, and stuff like that. So are you up for it, Martin? Yes, I'm up for it. <laughs> it's not your first time as well. So you've, you've done this before, Martin, haven't you? Yes. Yeah, this is lesson 11, everyone, by the way. Lesson 11. You can watch the previous live lessons if you are interested on my YouTube channel, Teachers Danek YouTube channel. And, ah, Herbert. It's Herbert. I am original Herbert, you, you now. 
I don't understand that, but I think his name is Herbert, maybe. His real name. Yeah. If if I am understanding this correctly. Anyway, sometimes it's difficult to to know what we're going to talk about, yeah. But is as as anything be has anything interesting been happening in the news, Martin? And is this something that you would enjoy talking about? About the oh. breaking news or any uh. stuff that that's kind of actually, actually not it's politics and uh, no, so politics. On. I no. don't like to speak about uh, okay. in public. <laughs> <laughs> so we have that to was... avoid. So we have to avoid politics then. Yeah, yeah. Okay, that's that's fine. That's fine. Yeah, well, politics. Well, every time you, uh, the same topic uh, like Corona. Yeah, I don't want to uh, start with this topic, uh, but yeah. yeah. It no, that's, yeah, you're, you're completely, you're completely yeah. right. Yeah. Oh, we have Zara here as well. Sunshine, that's Zara. Now we know her name as well. And I, I think she's either from Armenia or Azerbaijan. She's, it's one of those two countries. I can't remember. Tell us, Zara, I always forget. Every single time I forget. I think it's Armenia, right? I think you're from Armenia. Anyway, thank you for the virtual hugs. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's what's supposed to be an emoji, but it uh, YouTube does not support this emoji, so it's it's um, spelled out there. And Christina from Spain is here as well, which is fantastic. So many people watching; it's more and more. Martin, oh my goodness! <laughs> they, they came; they all came to see you for sure. <laughs> it makes me a little bit nervous. <laughs> Don't worry; we are in the same boat. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it turns out that I have guessed Sunshine's uh, uh, country, Mo uh, Moldavia. So, hey, one point for me, I guess. All right. Uh, so we we're not we are not supposed to talk about uh, the breaking news today or anything related to, uh, politics. Then, um, so what what are we going to talk about? We have mentioned weather. Um, to be honest, I have all, I could talk about tennis because I've just come back from a tennis match. I don't play for a real club. It's just an amateur at an amateur level, and I don't know. What about you, Martin? How has your day been so far? Perhaps we can speak about sports a little bit. I I want okay. to start uh, go for for jog for a jog. Well, we'll start for running, yeah? and perhaps you can give me uh, some some special tips when I start running. Yeah, well, Martin, the most important thing, the, the biggest yeah. or the, the, the greatest tip would be to start. Yeah. <laughs> because a lot of people just say, I am going to start running. Uh, it's my plan this year. This is my <laughs> sometime next year, maybe, you know. Uh, yeah. January the 1st, that's when I start. Mm -hmm. I think vast majority of people who say things like that, I want to start working out or going to the gym or I want to start running uh, the biggest the biggest problem is to start right yeah uh, have you ever run before Martin or yeah will it, but will it's, this be your first time no 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 I I run but it's uh oh, it's 10 years ago or so yeah it's really a long time um, ago okay. uh, but yeah if you get older you you think about your life and uh, your your health and um, yeah, yeah start to yeah do some sports or um, but the main reason <laughs> i had um, for me is um, I, if i run two floors upstairs i can't speak anymore yeah <laughs> run really run fast oh. yeah because uh, of, of my uh, my heart rate, yeah, it's right, 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 and, uh, right, yeah. Yeah. and uh, therefore I was thinking about perhaps it's good to go a little bit running um, to have a better condition, yeah, condition or right. uh, yeah, this heart rate mm -hmm. system mm -hmm. should be in a bit a little bit better shape. <laughs> like that's a that's a good phrase to get to get into a good shape. 
I'm just writing it down for us. And because as we know, uh, heart, the heart is, the heart is a muscle as well, isn't it? Yes. So mm -hmm. obviously we can train it. And I think it's a, it's an excellent idea. It's, a, it's obviously going to boost your health, your immunity and, uh, yeah. and, and confidence as well, because it's going to make you feel better. And as you said, you will you will not uh, have problems breathing, and your heart won't pump. So I was I was yesterday. Um, I visited an or I had an appointment with uh, uh, at a doctor, and uh, the doctor is on the second um, floor, and I was running <laughs> because I was a little bit in a in a hurry. Yeah, and uh, then if you go to the uh, desk counter in order to uh, to say i'm i'm martin and i'm here and uh, yeah. I, I was so i i couldn't speak uh, um pleasant or uh, what can i say uh, speak in a, a really good way i was so in a uh, breathing yeah heavily yeah. heavily breathing or yeah, yeah breathe, breathe. Uh, you breathe or strong. You, I think heavy, 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 heavy. Yeah. You breathe. You breathe heavily. Yeah, that's the qualification. Heavy breathing. Mm -hmm. And uh, yeah, this this uh, happened uh, uh, a couple of times before also. And I was thinking, I'm, I'm thinking about it. But you are right. Uh, I have to start. Yeah, that's the most and, important uh, thing. You just have yeah. to start. You know, sometimes it's about that. And the, okay, obviously, the first few sessions are going to be tough yeah you know it's gonna be tough but whenever you start something like that you know it's never gonna be easy but once you get past a few sessions you're going to start to enjoy it you know mm -hmm. and that's 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 important and i will and start you... well uh, i like i said before 10 years ago i i started also uh, running and i started in and this i i want to do this in the same way running for a minute walk for a minute running for a minute yeah and yeah. step by step and then try to uh, increase the number of running time and uh, i just decrease, I, uh, the, the the walking time <laughs> i don't know it, it's as it's gonna sound terrible but it reminds me interrupted yeah. sex <laughs> <laughs> i think oh. it's maybe this is called interrupted running or i think it has mm. a name or something i mm. in my country we say indian run as well mm. i don't know whether it's an international term but we say indian run like you you run a bit then you walk you know what i think this might be um, a way obviously but there is another way you just run slowly you know yeah. You, yeah. Mm -hmm. you you can try to run the whole distance without walking but you don't have to run fast you know just just yeah really start. slowly mm -hmm. you need to have a um constant pace right the word is pace yeah. you need to keep a pace keep pace um do we say keep a pace or keep pace i think keep pace right i'm gonna check it um uh, yeah i think keep pace pace is probably uncountable that's why you don't say keep a pace right you need to keep a certain constant pace you know and that's that's you know that's going to ultimately improve or your health functions and then it's it's get, it's gonna get fun once you see progress right it's like yeah. anything anything in life and i think with running you can see progress particularly fast yeah so you're gonna enjoy it i'm sure martin you are but so i, I rem yeah yeah go on Sorry. i remember um yeah uh if i did it 10 years ago i uh I um, improved my my fitness really much, but then the problem came out of the back and now back or of the sack or something like that. Uh, I'm not then sure you get what, what problem, you are saying. Problem but... with your knees and you you got problem with your hips and uh, it was so horrible. Yeah, and yeah. then you have to to do or to pause or have a break, and then. Yeah, you started from beginning, yeah, and uh, this is a little bit uh, 
de demotivating, yeah, I would mm -hmm. say. Yeah. No, I see what you I mean. Hope, I hope it isn't Martin. yet, yeah, but we will see. I get it. It happens to me too. But, yeah. uh, but with running, I would say, it, um, of course, you can get injured, but but I think it's less less probable, you know, yeah. because it's a constant movement, yeah? yeah, and it's not very fast unless you do sprints. It's not very fast, yeah. and if you if you just don't overload your 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 muscles, you know, it's 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 you need to give allow yourself some kind of a break as well, right? And that's that's what matters ultimately. But you know what? There are apps that you can actually install yeah. onto your phone, and I re highly recommend you do that mm -hmm. because uh, they have some of them. Obviously, when when you pay for for the app, uh, it's going to give you a certain program that you can follow as well. Mm -hmm. If you don't pay for the ser service, you can get the basic functions. For mm -hmm. example, I, ha I use the app called St Strava. Strava. Yeah, I, I have heard Strava. Yeah. I use that mm -hmm. one, and if you install it, then you, I can I can always see how often you run, and I will like I will like your <laughs> your your activity. It's called activity mm -hmm. there on the. Oh, mm -hmm. If any if any of you if any of you watching this are on Strava, and you want to add me and see where and <laughs> how often I run, uh, and how, maybe Martin as well then head over to my website teachesdenek.com where you can find it's like an orange icon and I, that's where you can add me yeah so martin once you start running you can just go to my website and just click the orange icon yeah. and then you can add me there mm -hmm. yeah so I, I suggest i suggest using these apps because i think it's going to make it fun because you will you will have some kind of record of of your effort you know Mm. And it's going to add to your motivation, I think. And I want to use a um, heart rate watch, or uh, yeah, in order to to check my heart rate, yeah, yeah because I'm all already over fifty, and therefore it's uh, better to to okay. check this. Yeah, yeah of and, course, of course. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. The, the, you have got watch like that. That, that definitely, mm. that definitely exists. Mm. For sure, for sure. Heart, uh, like watch measures your your heartbeat and all that. Yeah. Yeah. That, so that's the plan, Martin. So when are you going to start? <laughs> I hope this week. <laughs> I hope. That's, that's... I hope. I will do it. I will do it this week. <laughs> yeah. You have, if you say I hope or I yeah. something like that, I wish, yeah. I hope, or I think. No, it's never going to happen. You have to say. I will. Yeah, that's it. I will. I will do. Yeah. Yeah, which is, by the way, everyone, if you say I will in English, it's what we use for making promises. Will um, has got a lot of different meanings. It's an auxiliary verb that is used for all sorts of things. Uh, English learners often think that it's only used for the future. Mm. Well, not always, you know. Uh, but it's particularly used for making promises, which is kind of about future, to be honest. So when you say, I will do it, it's like saying, I promise, I swear. Right? <laughs> All right, Martin, we are going to ask you in the next live lesson with you, which will be in about a month, how many times you have you've gone, yeah, yeah. You've gone running. <laughs> We will see yeah, <laughs> what happened. No, don't say we will see. Don't say we will see. <laughs> That's another dangerous phrase. Don't say we will see. Uh, but but um, related to the to the future, yeah. We um, we, we, we we want to see. You know. <laughs> no, no, no. The problem it. is, if you say we will see, it sounds as if you're. Mm -hmm. You are sort of looking for excuse. You are looking for excuses already. Oh, sort okay, of, no. Maybe it won't happen. Maybe it will. We will see. You know, only time will tell what's going to happen for real. You see, so you have to. You have to just be be hard on yourself. You have to be okay, tough yes. on yourself. Just have to say, "I will do it," and that's it. You know, yeah. there's no going back. <laughs> Mm 
All right, we've got some more people watching here, so we can have a look. Uh, I think I didn't say that Ami Amit Alexander is watching. And also we've got Amar Play Z. Amar Play Z. Okay, cool. So, Martin, so what what other tips shall I give you? Huh? I would just like to say that running is such a great sport because you don't need almost any equipment, right? Some people even run barefoot mm -hmm. without any shoes, right? Barefoot. I, I was thinking about um, buying new shoes for running, uh, yeah. but yeah, I will start. Um, I will start without buying new shoes because uh, in order to check my yeah my hips, my knees, and so on. Yeah, but I, I think um, for me it's good. I I lost some weight, yeah, and um, therefore uh, the first step I did already and um, yeah, I wanted to to uh, lose or uh, to to lose weight because um, yeah, I was a little bit overweighted and um, and therefore I thought um, before I start running um, I should uh, decrease the number of uh, of kilograms <laughs> <laughs> so you are talking about losing weight yeah yeah losing weight yeah. Okay, so I'm just okay. I'm just writing down a few things because, as always, after our chat, we're going to go through some language together, yeah, which is yeah. which is part of this lesson. So, um, well, fingers crossed, fingers crossed. I'm sure, I'm sure you can make it, Martin. And sometimes yes. it's actually good that you can tell this to other people, you know, mm -hmm. because then you you are sort of putting more pressure on yourself. Sometimes we need it, you yeah. know. Um, when it comes to your hips or knees, you just need to start slow, you know. Just take it easy yeah. and test test your test the waters, so to speak, and uh, see what happens, you know. Yeah. Um, has anyone else been running lately? Anyone watching? Do you guys go jogging? I'm a massive fan myself. And the reason this is this is a sport that I do a lot these days is because it's just so simple. I can go running wherever. I, I did it when I was living in the mm -hmm. UK. I did it. I do it in winter, in, in summer. Uh, the temperature doesn't stop me. Sometimes when it rains, I go as well. If, if if it rains heavily, I don't like it so much. But I think the worst is for me is when it's windy. I I I can't stand it. Hmm. It's just I I don't like running against the wind and stuff like that. It's the same with playing football, to be honest. But for me, it was a natural natural thing to do. Like I still play football, Martin. Can you believe it? I'll. I thought I would retire, but I'm going to play again this season. But I don't, yeah, fine. you know, I don't give, give it as much as I used to in the, in the past. I don't train so much, you know. I, my training is playing tennis now, <laughs> <laughs> and then I just go to the matches, and it's still enough. Even at this age, it's still enough for me to to be able to run for 90 minutes. Can you believe it? Yeah. Oh, there is an a note. Okay. Somebody shoes. left a comment. Somebody left a comment. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, barefoot shoes. Yeah, I heard the same. Nina. Nina is mm -hmm. saying that barefoot shoes are amazing, the healthiest ones. I I heard the same. I think my sister bought them the other day, but um, I think it's tough. I think the the transition is tough. Like to getting used to it, the acclimatization is tough. You know, it, it, it's gonna hurt. You might, I don't know if you get blisters or something like that, but uh, Amit uh, is asking whether I'm a professional, uh, <laughs> I'm a professional, you could say athlete, for example, you could say a professional sportsman or professional athlete. Uh, we don't really say professional player on sport, Amit, Amit. 
Um, so um, you could say a professional athlete, which is a good phrase. Um, not really. I do play. I do play football for a team, so it's. There are two ways we can explain the word professional. Either it it means that you play for a real club, which is registered, which is my case, but I don't ever get paid for it. So then in the second meaning of the word professional is that you get paid, that you have a contract and you get paid. I've never been this good, unfortunately. So it's a it's a low level football, but it's a it's a real like nine uh, eleven side football. So it's a real competition. Players take it seriously. Uh, a lot of shouting. Refer there are referees there, you know. So, but I've never, I've never earned any, any money playing football. I've never been good enough, you know. <laughs> I know Martin is a is a huge fan of football himself, right? Yes, but uh, only looking or well, watching, watching. <laughs> <clears throat> Yeah, and tennis, tennis. I'm, 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 I'm definitely an amateur, amateur mm. tennis player. <laughs> but I enjoy it. It's a good sport. Of okay, course. Adam. Adam also says hi. Hello, Adam. Good to have you here. Hi. A lot of, a lot of people watching. I'm, I'm quite happy about these live lessons. It's, it's getting more and more popular. I think I found a niche, Martin. Do you know what a niche is? Yes. What is it? Tell 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 our listeners. A special a area in a subject, or I would say. Okay. Okay. I don't know exactly. And it's often used when we're talking about um, business. When you talk about business, mm. and you want to start a new business, you want to set up a business, and you are thinking like, what should I do? What should I sell? And the best thing you can do is that you find a niche. Mm. Mm. So, for example, in my situation, I'm an English teacher. There are thousands, English, thousands of English teachers online, right? And I have to just stand out somehow. I have to do, okay, I guess I have a cap. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, okay, so I, but one of my niches is that I teach English using board game board games another one is that i have a podcast but you now have so many teachers that have their podcast so mm. i was like what can i do differently okay let's do live lessons and let's make it even crazier let's make live lessons when i have no idea what i'm going to talk about <laughs> <laughs> zero pre zero prep lessons it's called mm. It might seem easier, it might seem harder. It depends who you are. It depends on your personality. For some people, this is easier because they just like to speak off the cuff. For some people, it's hard because it's too much stress. Mm. So it really depends who you are, you know. Yeah. I like it. For me, it's a, it's, I, I understand it as a challenge. All right. Um, so, Martin, shall we look at the language or do, is it too early? Is there anything else you would like to tell us? Uh, for me, it's okay looking to the language. For me, it's okay looking? Uh, to the language. Hmm. Preposition. Change the preposition. For or for the language. At. At the. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, we can have a look at the verb look and all the different ways you can use this verb. All right. So. So let me just um, let me just share my screen with everyone so that you can see the file that I'm using. Oh, how do you spell niche? All right. Niche is spelled N-I-C-H-E as Sunshine says. That's correct. 
that's correct spelling. By the way, in American English, it's pronounced niche. Niche. Yeah, so I speak, I use British English mostly. So I say niche with sh sound. Uh, this has got some kind of an irregular, irregular pronunciation. So it's more difficult to spell for people sometimes. So wait, wait I'm going to share my screen now, as I promised. Okay, here we go. So Martin, this is it. Can you can you all see it? Yes. So this is live lesson, live English lesson eleven. Student Martin, nationality German, level C one. Correct sentence is black. Incorrect sentence is red. Useful vocabulary blue. When there is a pronunciation thing, I mark it purple. So. I think you said to make the opportunity. Ah, yeah, to take I the think, opportunity. I think the collocation is to take the opportunity. Uh, yeah. Yes. You take you take the opportunity to do something. I think you don't make it. I guess you could technically make it if you sort of like. Hmm. Can you make the opportunity? It would be like the meaning would be like to create it, you know. Yeah, but I, uh, I, I think. Suppose, uh, but that was not what you were trying to say, right? Yeah, I yeah. think take the opportunity. Uh, I I have, I have heard in the past so often. Yeah, take yeah, the yeah, 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 yeah. Mm -hmm. Because because the 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 context that you were using it in. What were you trying to say? Can you remind us, Martin? Uh... I can't remember. Ah, uh, for my holidays, right? Yeah, three three weeks holiday in a row, yeah. uh -huh. uh, in summertime, and um, I have I have the the chance to 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 make mm -hmm. it or to <laughs> to have uh -huh. it. So maybe here you you wanted to say something else. You wanted to say to something like to make the most of it, right? To make the most of it, would that work, Martin? Is that what you were trying to say? Also, to make use of it? No? Yeah, make use of it. Yeah, I would say. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Because you yeah. often like take the opportunity to do something, for example. Yeah. Mm -hmm. For example, yeah. when the opportunity presents itself, right? You could, you just have to take it. Don't, don't hesitate, you know, take the opportunity. It's mm -hmm. used in this kind of sense as well. Yeah. And if you have a holiday and you have a lot of days off, let's say, well, mm -hmm. the best thing to do is to make the most of it, to make use of it, right? To, yeah, something like that. So I, I would use to make the most of it. For uh, in my in my humble opinion, that's the one that fits here the most. But all these expressions have a similar kind of a similar meaning, but not mm -hmm. exactly the same. Uh, okay, so what's wrong with this, Martin? I want to start go for a jog. So, what's what's the problem here? I want to start going for a jog, or going for a jog. That's that's no. possible, yeah. yeah. So the problem is that after the verb start, you cannot use bare infinitive, yeah. Yeah. So you have yeah. to use. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. after start, we can use ing. So I want to start going for a jog or I want to start to go for a jog. But to be honest, Martin, I think mm. it's a bit awkward to say it like this. I think there is an mm. easier way to say this. I think most people would just say, I want to what? Start running. <laughs> start running or jogging, yeah? Mm. Sometimes there is an easier way to say things in English. Yeah. So as you can see, what make what makes it this so what makes this sound better? What makes this look more natural, Martin? Yeah, the second one. Yeah, but what why wh why does it look more natural than the previous one, in your opinion? Yeah, it sounds it sounds better. That's a good exactly. Say. But but do you know why? Mm -hmm. Do you know? What's, how is it different? How is this one different from that one? Even if even if we correct the first one. Um, 
What's missing in the second one? Yeah, the um, uh, the word for what you, you, what is? Yeah, it's it's what, uh, what it's called. Um, it's just it's just more condensed, you know. It's just mm. more more condensed. That's it. No. Con more concise, you know. Sometimes, like if there are too many words, it sounds a bit awkward. Mm -hmm. So I think yeah. I think that's why. Start to go for a jog, you know. Start. I want. Ah, maybe it's also because there is double two. Want to? It's like I want to start going. I want to start going for a jog. I want to start running. It's just easier. Yeah. Anyway, uh, a good idiom is to be in a good shape. Be in a good shape. Are you in a good shape, Martin? Uh. I would say, oh, I don't want to say that I'm really good in a good shape. How can I say I'm, uh, I don't know how to say, uh, normal. I, I would say normal. <laughs> okay. So, normal. so, so you could say, um, uh, I don't know. <laughs> what can you say? Can anybody help us? You could say I am, um. My physical condition is is average. I don't know something. Average, like yeah, perhaps average. I'm in. A, I'm, would you say I'm in an average shape? I'm in a good shape. I'm in, like condition. Mostly, most mostly people just make it black and white. You are either in a good shape or in a bad shape. Mm -hmm. Maybe you could say something like I'm in an okay shape. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Decent shape as well. My you might say. Mm -hmm. I, or people would just say something like it could be worse. It could be worse. It could yeah. be worth it. Yeah. Right. All right. Um, so you can get into a good shape or in a good shape. Um, yeah, when you were talking about the, uh, your visit in hospital. Host uh, and, doctor, doctor. Yeah, hmm. you went to a, to a doctor yeah. uh, for a checkup, right? For a medical checkup. Yes, for it was a uh, skin a skin doctor. Ah, is it special, called der special. dermatologist? Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, I, I haven't. I'm just checking everyone, but I think it's called dermatologist. Uh, yeah, dermatologist. Okay, I'm just gonna write this down here. And you you were saying something along the lines of that you went. To the desk counter and you know i think there is an easier way to say all of this yes you could just say you you, you registered you went you went to a counter to register i think you i can't remember what exactly you said but um my what's what uh, the um the sense was check. i i run two floors yeah. and reached the entry of the doctor um, office or a doctor uh, area. And then you stand uh, and wait that the lady say, come in and, uh, right, 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 yeah. right, 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 right. <laughs> and this was yeah. Uh, my. Yeah, I, I see, I see what you mean. I see what you mean. Uh, I think you want to say waiting room. Is that a waiting room? No entry, entry room or um, okay, okay, okay. Uh, maybe whether rep, rep, uh, receptionist, receptionist, uh, reception, Re reception, rich reception. Re reception. Okay, you went to the reception, yeah. Hmm. A waiting room or a lounge room or something like that. I think there are different words to describe it, so I don't know exactly. Yeah, yeah but yeah, okay. Um, we were looking at the verb to breathe. breathe. I would just like to point out that the, the pronunciation with this word, it can be tough for some people. So how do you pronounce this verb again, Martin? Breathe. Yeah, so we should, we should use the, do I have the phonetic symbols here somewhere? Oh, here, here they are. You need to use this, Martin, this sound, the, the, the. breathe breathe yeah 
a breathe. Breathe. It's, some, it's it's sometimes it's tough for people to use this one, right? Yeah. Because for example, in some languages it doesn't exist. Most languages it doesn't really exist, to be honest. Breathe. Yeah. Like this. Um, so in some verbs, you find this at the end of the word, like sunbathe is another one. Sunbathe. Sunbathe. And it's, it's tough for people because everybody thinks it's sunbathe, but it's not. It's sunbathe and breathe, breathe. I think I, I said breath. And instead of uh, I breathe, can't, uh, I can't uh, remember. Uh, I, I wasn't even correcting this, Martin. I think mm, you said mm, it correctly, mm, but I was just, I just wanted sure. to point it out to yeah. to mm. our viewers, to the learners, because this can cause trouble. This can cause problems. So the noun from breathe is how do you pronounce the noun, Martin? Breath. That's right. So this it's a different breath, sound huh? at the yeah, end. Yeah. It's sound. This one. Sound. Oh my God. What's going on? Um, there we go. I just need to change the font. It's a bit annoying, but I just want to make it look nice here. Breath, right? Just like you say bath. 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 Mm -hmm. Some people say even bath. Yeah, people from from the Midlands and from the North, they say bath. Anyway, it's also the th sound. Yeah. So to breathe heavily is the collocation. You breathe heavily, right? Mm -hmm. Some people say, I can't catch my breath as well. Can't catch one's breath, right? <sighs> yeah. yeah, can't catch my breath. Mm -hmm. uh, okay, then we're talking about pace. Pace is like your tempo, you know. Yeah, how fast you run, but uh, at a constant speed, basically. What's your pace? And these apps, like Strava, that one of them we were talking about it it measures your pace as well it tells you whether like how how fast each of your laps are yeah so that's pretty cool like each of your kilometers how fa how fast you run and your your distance as well so it's pretty cool you know you have a record and you can see that each time you run you're going to improve but you have to take your your cell phone with you, yeah. That's in order to yeah. to uh, record this. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but but it's not so complicated. Either you can have some kind of a sweatshirt with a with a pocket, which I sometimes have, or mm -hmm. you buy a thing that you. It's like an armband. You put it yeah. on your arm. Yeah. I saw it. It's yeah. actually yeah. less annoying than you might think. And mm -hmm. also, what I do whenever I run, I listen to a podcast, so you can kill yeah. more birds with one stone. You know. Mm -hmm. It's pretty cool because then you can listen to an English podcast and yeah. do something for your body as well, which is like it's a you do two things and you can be proud of yourself, right? So I and also my sister gave me as a present, she gave me um uh like a belt as well. It's like a belt. I quite like that. I think it's I think I like it more than on my arm because when it's on my arm, I need to change it. You know, I, I don't want to wear it on, on my left arm all the time because then I would have imbalanced muscles. So I, I kind of like it as a belt, to be honest. I like it more. Mm -hmm. And I saw sometimes um, runners that have, they have, they had um, bottles. What with did them. they have? Sorry? Bottles, bottles with water. Do you do the same or not? Bottles, water bottles. bottles. Water bottles to drink something or... Um... Yeah. No, no, because I own... Okay, I have it. I have the belt for bottled mm -hmm. waters as well. But I 
I only used it whenever I ran for two hours. So yeah, uh, because yeah. usually I run just 10 kilometers or 11 kilometers, mm -hmm. which is one hour and something in a few minutes. But uh, for example, last year, I this year I didn't do it, but last year I ran 20 kilometers about, about four or five times because I wanted to, you know, go for it. And when it's two hours, I need to drink, yes. One mm. hour, I don't need to drink. Mm. Okay. Your body will get used to it. You will not need it. If you run 30 minutes, for sure you will not need it. Mm. For sure you will not need to drink. But I think when when it's more than like more than one one hour, you might you might mm. want to consider getting bo bo a bottle. Yeah. Okay. Um, I wasn't sure about this collocation to do the step. To the first step I did. Uh, I, think I, I I lost weight. I lost weight. <laughs> I want to 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 say. Um... Yeah, I, I want to start running, uh, yeah. and, the and I did before I start running uh, or um, to start running. I lost weight or lost weight in order to be a little bit uh, in better shape. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's better for your joints and for your muscles and everything for your yeah. whole body. Yeah, for your feet of and uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. And this was this I wanted to say. <laughs> It was the first step I did already. I know, I know, <laughs> but I'm just, I'm just looking at it, and I think the correct collocation should be to take, to take a step. You know. Oh, okay. I think, I think, and I'm just trying to check it. Take a step. It's always good to check it because every decent teacher. Ah, yeah, I, to I took already. Because, yeah. yeah, to take a step. You definitely take a step. I'm sure about it. Mm -hmm. But the question is, can you do a step? I guess. I guess if you if you say it in an informal way, some people might say it. But it's really better to say to take a step. Yeah. yeah. And then you also said this, Martin. And can you I guess what's really what's wrong with it? Mm -hmm. I don't know. A little bit. Ah, perhaps um, to change a little bit uh, with another word. Yeah, yeah. overweighted. Uh, overweighted. Oh is, no, overweighted. We don't. We don't really say. Yeah, it like it's, that. it's a, a German uh, translation to, into English. <laughs> this is the reason. I think. Yeah. I think the word is overweight, right? Overweight. Anybody say overweighted? Yeah, I'm looking at Cambridge Dictionary. It should be overweight. Yeah? Overweight. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, 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 it's a, it's an adjective. It's it's overweight. Overweight. Okay. I, I think I misspelled it as well, right? Yeah. Here. Yeah. It's possible that this word exists, though. Let me let me check this word. Overweighted. It's interesting because the spell checker doesn't consider it a mistake. Although I would say it's a mistake, unless it means something different. Aha, uh aha, -huh. uh aha, -huh, aha. Uh aha, -huh. uh -huh. I see, I see. So, hmm. I think why the reason it sounds strange to me is because most people just say overweight, yeah. But technically, the past tense from you could say like overweighted if you if you if you understood it as a verb, yeah. If you understand this overweight as a verb, I think technically it could be, could be, if something is too heavy, right? You could say it's like a verb, but to be honest, here it's like an adjective. Yeah. So. Mm -hmm. Most people just say overweight, not overweighted. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. um, also, one thing I notice you often use a little bit. Uh, I was a little bit. 
Yeah, I think you sometimes say it like that. And honestly, you should mm -hmm. say, I was a bit or I was a little. So the problem with little bit, um, I think the problem is, what if, what if I remove, yeah, that's what I thought. The problem is that like, you cannot say a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can either say a bit, yeah, a little, or little bit, I think. This ah. combination, you see, even it's just like it's too it's too much, too many words here. Okay. Little bit. I think you should always say a, a bit, a little bit, a bit. I, I, the easiest way is to, to say I was a bit overweight. I was yeah. a bit overweight. Yeah. Okay, now you can lose weight, right? You can gain weight. And there is a phrasal verb starting with P. Do you know this one, Martin? Um, put. Yep. Put weight. Mm -hmm. Put on. Yeah, put on weight. Ah, okay. On weight as well. Yeah, gain, gain. I have heard it. It's a different, uh, the mm. opposite of lose. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. You can lose weight. Yeah. You gain weight. Yeah. You can gain weight, but you can also put on weight. Professional. I don't know why I wrote that one. That. It's a easy word. Zero prep. Yeah. Zero prep. Prep lesson means like you don't prepare for it. For me, it's okay looking to the language. Yeah. So we have a lot of ways we can use look. Yeah. So you look at something with your eyes. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. looking at you, Martin. I'm looking at all mm -hmm. the viewers now. You can look for something. So when would you look for something, Martin? Uh, for searching. Searching is, is yeah. Look for yeah. Uh, mm. It's if you lose something, mm. you lose your keys. You can look for it, right? Okay. Uh, you can look up to someone. Yeah. Which means to admire someone. Admire. To mm -hmm. Someone, someone. You respect someone. You look up to them, right? You admire them. Uh, what else? Look. Look after. What's look after, Martin? Yeah, for children, for example. You look after children, after right? Them. You look after children, so you take care of your children. Take right? care. Yeah. yeah. Take care. And look on. You can look on. So, for example, something is happening in the street. There is an accident. And there might be some people, instead of helping, they might be just looking on. Um, Do you know what it means? We, uh, uh, they, are watch, they are watching something without getting involved. They are just what we call onlookers. Onlookers. Mm -hmm. Something without getting involved yeah you could look away means turn turn it's like your... turn away right when yeah. maybe somebody maybe you see <laughs> somebody gets injured breaks their leg mm. and it looks terrible and you are maybe a little bit squeamish you don't like seeing blood, so you look away. Oh, yeah. I don't want to see this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you can look out. Look out. Out of the window. Look out. Oh, uh -huh. okay. So that's like look out of. Look, look out, out of. of. Oh my God, what have I done? Oh, look out of. You can look out of the window. Yeah. yeah. 
uh, you can look out. Um, uh, it means, uh, no, look out is used usually by itself like this. It's like watch out, yeah? So it means be careful, yeah? Like be careful. Don't, don't, don't get run over by a car. Yeah. Watch out, look out. Um, you can look into something. You could say the police are looking into this murder. Martin, what does it mean? Into this murder? Um... Yeah, every everything. Um, now, how to say his behavior and um, uh, his strategies, or um, okay, so it's called of, of doing uh, uh, yeah, murder or murder. Yeah, some, so they are um, trying to find out all the details. They are trying to investigate. Investigation, yeah. Yeah, investigate. investigate. Yeah. There are more. There are more phrasal verbs you can use. Um, but I think this will do for now, yeah? I think look at is not considered a phrasal verb. Uh, it's just a preposition here, I think. You're looking at something. But all the others are most likely phrasal verbs. As you can see, some phrasal verbs are more idiomatic like look out, look into something. Some phrasal verbs are less idiomatic, more transparent, like look out of the window, right? All right. Now, Martin, do you have any more questions? Is Are we done with this here? I think we are done with that. So questions, do we have any questions from the listeners? Oh, okay. I think um, uh, we have got more suggestions for Luke so look, look down back, on yeah. someone, yeah, is the opposite of which one, Martin? To look, look down, up. To look, look up. up to someone. Mm. Yeah, so it's to look down on someone. It's the opposite, and so that's why I, I made this sign here. And also look back. I think we say look back at right. Checking it. Yeah, so no, maybe we say look back on actually. So when you can look back on your past, like whatever you did in the past, yeah, you can look at look back on you just checking, thinking about something you did or that happened in the past. Yeah. <laughs> maybe if this this is not one of my best lessons I've ever taught. I will look back on this lesson uh, with disgust. <laughs> you know, something like that. Okay, so do we have any more questions? Uh, look down on somebody, Alexander, means uh, it's like the opposite of admiring. It means um, that you don't really, really respect the people at all. It's... You, it's like con contempt, you know, you disdain them. It's another one. Disdain. Disdain. Huh? You just think they don't deserve any respect. You look down on them. Okay. All right. Let's have a look if there, we there are more questions here. Yeah, Adam is saying that there are other ways to say Lulu cat. You can gaze at something, you can gape at something. That's right. Um, to there gaze are other at, ways. Sorry? To, to gaze at, I haven't heard. Yeah, gaze. Um, a friend of mine wrote a, a book of short stories. One of them was read out on the podcast, on the Next English podcast. It's called uh, Battery Life. And one of the short stories was called Stargazer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was about a guy who who was on a crane, who was live who was working on a crane, and he could always check the, the stars. He gazed at the stars. So if you, you have a telescope, you gaze at the stars. Mm -hmm. You know. 
Um, stare. You can also stare, stare at somebody, right? Stare. The, the, the meaning is a bit different when you gaze or stare and gape. I think it's like for a longer time. Hmm. And it could also be a bit, for example, staring could have a negative connotation, you know? Like if you stare at the girl for so long and mm. maybe she doesn't like it so much or something like that. All right. I'm not sure I'm able to respond to all these comments because there are so many comments, which I would like to thank you for, guys, because it actually helps the algorithm. It, it's fantastic. It helps the algorithm so more people will be able to see these videos, which is ultimately going to help the channel. So thank you very much for all those comments. I'm sorry if I wasn't able to respond to them all because I'm still I still need to focus on Martin here. Um, yeah, Alexander Amid was was very very active today. Thank you very much for that. Yeah, Nina also used the phrase to take my breath away. If something takes your breath away, Martin, that is that is that a positive thing? If it takes your breath away, or do you think it's something negative? Or if, hmm. yeah, there is there is a, um, a famous song, "Take Take Your Breath Away," I think, but um, but I don't know exactly. Um, I I would say um, that you, yeah, you you breathe out the the air out of the lung, lungs, or uh, no, it's more like, it's more like, wow. Oh, okay. That's incredible. I can't even breathe. It took my breath away, right? It's, oh. it's so amazing. It's so astonishing. It's just incredible. It's so, so amazing that it takes your breath away, right? So it's used in, in an, in a positive, positive sense, mostly. Oh, okay. It's 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 like there is admiration, uh, a little bit of surprise as well because something is like amazing or exciting or beautiful, let's say, or something. Yeah, mm. maybe it's used in songs a lot because it's a, often about love. Yeah, so if a girl takes your breath away, you sort of fall in love with that girl. You know. Yeah, but I think you can say it like that. Very nice uh, idiom. Very nice idiom, uh, Nina. Okay, well, that's it for today. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, everyone. Please don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. I know this may sound like, like, a, like a boring phrase, a cliche that you hear from all YouTubers, but I'm not even a YouTuber in the first place. So <laughs> I'm an English teacher who... who is just trying to do something here, okay? And if you press the like button, it does help me. It does help me because YouTube, this is how it works, right? If if a video has likes and comments, it's going to show it to more people. And then more people can find the channel, more people can subscribe to it. And that means more fun for me as somebody trying to do something here, you know, like when I see response from people, when I see people are getting involved, I enjoy it more. There was one more thing I forgot about, Martin. Yeah, this one. I forgot about this one. Um, if I did it 10 years ago, then the problems came. What's, what's wrong with if here, Martin? Uh, it's not an if sentence, I would say. Yeah, it's not a condition. What what it's, do you need instead of if? When. Exactly. When I did exactly. uh, it mm -hmm. 10 years ago, yeah. Mm. You know why this is happening? Because in certain languages, there is only one word for if and when. Yeah? Yeah. For example, in my language, and I think it's probably the same in German. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And we use it for both conditionals and time clauses with when but in english it's a distinct it's a different difference yeah. there is a difference okay well martin i guess that's it for today thank you very much for attending the class thank you for teaching me 
anytime. It's always a pleasure. And I wish you all the best. Fingers crossed with running, with jogging. <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> I want I want a full report. Yeah. First thing in the morning, Martin, okay? <laughs> yeah, okay. <laughs> all right. Okay, everyone. Cheers. Okay. Thanks for watching this. Bye-bye. 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 Bye. -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye.